Welcome to DevSecOps, the good, the bad, the ugly. My name is Zach Knord, and I am your host. This video cast series is about all things related to DevOps um, with an emphasis placed on security as a part of that practice. Today, I'm gonna be interviewing Chitra. Chitra is the Director of Cybersecurity um, at Fannie Mae and has been leading um, the AppSec program there as well. Um, Chitra, can you please introduce yourself and, and share a little bit about your background? Thank you for having me, Zach. I really appreciate your time. Um, so my, I'm Chitra Ilango. Um, I, my title is actually Cybersecurity Director, Vulnerability Management at Fannie Mae. It's a long name, um, like the name, you know, we do many, many things um, in terms of vulnerability. Right. And if anybody is looking for jobs, Fannie Mae is a great company. I know I have to put it out there. Check right. out our, you know, career sites. You will not be disappointed, promise you that. Um, so that being said, with my title, you know, my title is not just AppSec. Um, I actually have four different pillars within the vulnerability management. And one of the pillars is application security. And guess what? January of this year, 2020, we decided to form a new pillar called DevSecOps. Um, yeah, DevSecOps, because when I started in 2015 in InfoSec, I have to tell you, InfoSec was a chance by chance for me. I never realized there was... Uh, such a powerful thing as InfoSec uh, until 2015. I was yeah. a hardcore developer doing a lot of development. And 2015, I was given an opportunity to venture into InfoSec. I said, hmm, I don't know what this InfoSec is. Let me, you know, um, take up and see if it feels like, you know, my career path. Uh, I'll probably, you know, prolong. But then it's it's been one of the amazing rides. If, People ask me if I wanted to go back leaving information security. I would say no. Even if they didn't pay me, I'll still work in information security. <laughs> oh, don't don't <laughs> the bosses that, right? I know. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, but it's it's such an because you'll never get bored with information security because the hackers are getting smarter. So if the hackers are getting smarter, you have to be defending. So yeah. you have to be get, getting smarter than the hackers. So it's an interesting job. So like I said, in 2020, we developed, we built a new team called, we are still building the new team called um, DevSecOps. Uh, you know, it's more of the security piece of the DevOps in my if I had to tell secure DevOps, that is what I would call, you know. Yeah, it's great that you brought that up because I actually created a post this week talking about, you know, what are your thoughts on the words DevOps or DevSecOps? I, I'd be curious to get your thoughts on that. <laughs> you try to actually got, you know, get into that. Yeah, it's very interesting because many people still get offended if you use if you interject the word security within devops because devops has been there for so long right. they assume that security is part of devops but you know what i slightly disagree um not slightly actually i disagree a lot uh, <laughs> because because i think if you just coin the term devops not many people Coming from a development background, seriously, I did not know what security was and I didn't care about security. But then when I was on the other side of security, you know, on the other side of technology where information security was a piece, that is when I realized, oh my God, when you coin the word DevOps, people don't by default consider security as part of it. So you need to actually explicitly mention the word security if given a choice, I would call it as Sec DevOps. Sec DevOps, yeah. Right. So I would I would put security as the most important, you know, word in that DevSecOps. It's not just a word, a coinage of word, right? It is more of the processes. So security is a encapsulation. It is all over DevOps. Yeah. So secure DevOps or Dev uh, DevSecOps doesn't really matter. But I would like to see the word Sec. But then, you know, I was in one of uh, one of the chats the other day, and somebody said, "Yeah, I, you know, we don't really agree with DevSecOps or Sec DevOps. It doesn't matter, but DevXOps because X probably is a variable. It's not just pertaining to security, but also could mean several other things. But I still will stick with DevSecOps because it's securing your DevOps. That's my take." 
Yeah, no, that's great. And I think that's kind of the, uh, the argument there is where does it end, right? With adding <laughs> where you put, you put the variable X in there, right? Then you can kind of um, add whatever it is. I've, I've, I've heard that one as well. So no, that's great. Chitra. And I really appreciate the feedback on it. I know it's a, a passionate subject for many. Um, so when you start looking at the, regardless of the name, right? And adding security into DevOps, um, what, what are some of the things that you've learned along the way? I know you've, you've been doing that um, at Fannie Mae. Can you share about your experiences there? Sure. Um, so when we started, I think our journey of Fannie Mae in DevSecOps, the security piece of it, started, I think, around late 2015, 2016. Um, most of the application security folks were developers. We come from development background. And taking the developer's view or perspective, we realized, you know, security was done way too late in the game. You know, we needed to, you know, move security to the left, empower the developers. So what happened was we started as a passion of few people within AppSec, uh, application security team, of integrating several hooks within the pipeline. You know, lightweight during the build, you know, deep down during your nightly schedules. We started off and, you know, we started building small step at a time. Our journey first started with a SATIC code analysis. So it's called SAST. Yep. Um, that is actually the easiest of all, I would think, integrating your SAST within your pipeline because you have several tools. But now when we started in 2015, 2016, uh, they, weren't, they were tools doing a great job, but then they were not very easily uh, integrated as part of your pipeline. What I mean by that is basically you need to have an API, externalize your code. So, you know, we started having the hooks of static code analysis as part of our pipeline. But with the newer technologies and newer tool set, I think the API or externalizing your, uh, you know, static code analysis will actually yield a lot more benefit. Right. And the triaging, the true positive, false positive, the tools have, you know, uh, scaled much better than where we were in, you know, two, three years ago. So yeah. we started off with the SAST and I call Equifax. Uh, I think most of us remember the Equifax issue in 2017. Yeah. Uh, that is when, you know, people realized, oh, static code analysis is not the only thing. There is something which we need to invest in. Mm -hmm. Many people at that point didn't think of third party open source as a big deal for security. But I think... Uh, Equifax changed that uh, perspective. So we then immediately after Equifax, we made it a uh, mandatory, you know, scan for the SCA. And we, there are several tools, but I'm not advocating we use Sonatype as one of the right. uh, tools for third party analysis. We started off at SAST, we did the SCA, and then we said, hmm, we're giving them static code analysis. Let's, you know, give the end uh, developers, empower them with penetration testing. So we started using, uh, you know, um, tools like, um, you know, proxy tools, basically. I wouldn't want to name the tools because there are several of them. So we integrated that. But then later on, we realized, you know, some of the tools are not scalable, uh, you know, because you're talking about one, two applications. Yeah, it'll scale. But then when you're talking about several applications going through the pipeline, we need robust infrastructure. So now we are rewriting most of our things within the API based model where we don't care about the tool, the pipeline tools or where it is or what it is. We just give them the API and the parameters they need to pass and they can invoke our API. So that's where we started. But at this current journey, I think I'm really, really excited to tell you uh, everything was on-prem and we are moving the whole thing to you know, uh, the cloud. Yeah. We are using AWS. But my, my um, I'm very excited for this year and the next. The reason is, we only spoke about application security um, scanning in the past, but now DevSecOps is not just application security. It's a holistic security embedded or invoked within your pipeline. So we are now building the infrastructure scanning um, in addition to the application scanning. And then we are going to build in the compliance and the configuration, the secrets manager checks. You know, it's, I mean, it's going to be a huge, great pipeline eventually. Yeah. Um, we have a roadmap of, I think, 2021 mid. That's what we are hoping. And we are now having the serverless 
you know, also as part of the pipeline, container scanning as part of the pipeline. So we are very excited for the this uh, that, year and yeah. the next. Yeah, no, that's that's yeah. amazing, Chitra. That's very exciting. So when I look at you know going in theme with the, the video cast series, talking about something that went well and sharing your journey there, what was a, a challenge along the road with this maturation process, uh, right? To adding security into the the DevOps practice um, that that maybe you experienced, and and what was something that you learned from that? Um, you know what? When you work with passion, you don't think challenges is a bad thing you yeah. take them in stride and you know you yeah. work through it um mm -hmm. i didn't see major challenges uh, but i think the culture change was the most important right. sort of slightly a difficult one because it was on both sides right application teams were concentrating on their functional test cases and functionality when we embedded the security it became an overload for them and they started pushing back they did not want to collaborate but then you know when they realized the potential benefit later on eventually before they went into production that is when they said oh my god we don't have debt we are getting short in our debt. So this is actually a win for us. So that is how, you know, the application development teams, and I wouldn't say they did it voluntarily. If I were to, you know, follow security as a developer, that'll be the last thing on my list. But I think there was also a hammer of governance from top down. It's not only down up, top down as well. So the leaders, the senior leaders supported um, you know, moving security to the left. So because of that, we didn't see that much of a challenge, but that was one of the challenges uh, that I could speak of. Right. And it's from the development side, but then from the application security or the security folks, they were worried if you automated things and empower the developers, will they be losing their job? So mm -hmm. That, yeah, is, that is one major thing. And then, you know, we had to, I had to convince people, no, 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 we are not going to be losing our jobs because we are going to be spending it innovating newer security, you know, uh, configurations or security hooks. And yeah. that's how, you know, we came to a state where we are not only looking at application security because we have the time now, we are investing into other security hooks yeah. within the pipeline. So that was one of the uh, you know challenges I faced. Uh, but if somebody was going to do it, um, you know, if they were going to start from scratch for DevSecOps, right? Mm -hmm. What I would do is, I mean, this is my opinion. I'm not quoting okay. anyone here. <laughs> okay. Get, get developers and make them train them to become security champions and make them a security person. The other way around, right? Making a security person do the development doesn't really work yeah. but the other way it works it's not because you know i was a developer and you know i'm a security right. no it really because developers actually are trained to think logical um, you know from get go when they're starting their code so training them is much easier yep and i've heard that consistently mm -hmm. across the board uh, for many many people that's what i've heard quite a few cso's talk about right they look to hire developers that have a passion in security like you were yep. talking about. many sounds like many people on your team which has been going well so chitra thanks so much for coming on i have to keep them fairly short just with the the time restrictions on linkedin but i uh, appreciate you taking the time to come on and, and hope you have a great great evening okay thank you thank you so much you too have a great evening